Hello Vinyl Community! I have not made a video for quite a while, mostly because I was busy with uh, making other videos for YouTube, uh, all the other stuff I'm doing in German. Um, and also I was busy with all kind of stuff, so uh, I, I even didn't have that much time to listen to music, old music or new music. But I thought it's quite high time to do something, so <clears throat> Uh, this is a little stack with my latest endeavors, stuff I have listened to yesterday and the day before yesterday. Now, um, sometimes I like to start with something that is completely bonkers, so to speak. And that's certainly the case with this album, Listomania. Uh, this is a uh, soundtrack production to a movie by... Uh, None other than uh, Ken Russell. Now, if you know Ken Russell, then you probably know that this is some uh, heavy, tasteless stuff. Like basically everything that Ken Russell <laughs> ever filmed. Um, that does not need to be necessarily a bad thing. Um, tasteless can be original sometimes. Now, this is generally speaking a Rick Wakeman production uh, with a lot of shared credits. Uh, with uh, Roger Daltrey, who also acts uh, in this movie. I mean, the music is uh, yeah quite tedious in parts. Uh, I like to have this album because it's such a crazy novelty. It's probably the most insane album that Rick Wakeman was ever involved in. Uh, probably just have a little look at these these photos or these these freeze frames from the movie. That you can see gilded a gilded Rick Wakeman here, who appears in the movie. So um, that's some crazy shit, really. <laughs> now a uh, year later, um, Rick Wakeman did this album, 1976, White Rock. Now this is a uh, a musical companion. To, a, to the official documentary for the 1975 uh, Olympic Games um, in Innsbruck, Austria. And uh, yeah, I like it. This is a really nice album. There are some quite great tunes on it. And it's highly listenable. Um, and it's most certainly uh, the only record I own that has pictures of a bobsled on it. And... Uh, People playing ice hockey. So uh, it's a cool record. White Rock, Rick Wakeman. Now uh, I am uh, a big fan of Pierre Merlin's Gong. So this is Leave It Open. This is uh, their album from the early 80s that they recorded uh, right after um, Time is the Key. Um, it's a very bad looking cover, that is true, but the music is cool, it's a little more, um, it's, it's, it's not very guitar oriented, I think it's very dominated by, by vibraphones and, and, and uh, xylophones. Um, every time when I look at this picture, I always wonder how these guys manage to stay so slim, I mean, I mean look at, look at Hansford Row here. I was slim like that, maybe until 1993 or 4 or something. But he still looks like that. He hasn't, he has hardly changed. Well, some people know how to do it. Maybe he doesn't eat anything. <laughs> so, uh, Pierre Merlin's gone. Leave it open. Then I listened to something uh, that I haven't heard for quite a while. It's the. Uh, Famous Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman and Howe album, which was quite an interesting statement when this came out. This was, I think, 1989. And uh, it quite caught me by surprise because, honestly, the last, the last Yes album of this era was Big Generator, which I felt was massively disappointing. I really loved 90125, so with Big Generator, I think everybody expected another 90125, and then 
this this uh, tedious uh, thing came out after like two and a half year of recording. So when this came out, I was thinking like, wow, that's that sounds really interesting. Uh, so this is a uh, this has become quite a classic here, uh, sort of a non-canonic yes album with beautiful Roger Dean uh, design. And uh, and it's a very good sounding vinyl record. I was very surprised back in the day when I bought this. Um, so this is an, it's an original copy I bought right when it came out and um, has a fantastic sound. Yeah, the songs are alright. Some of them are really, really good. For example, uh, Fist of Fire or uh, Birthright. Um, all very John Anderson driven, so there's, there's a lot of uh, esoteric... Uh, Themes on it and all kind of uh, cultural cultural references and uh, this photograph here. So um, it's a well-known record. I haven't I haven't listened to it for quite a while, but now that I've heard it again, I can just confirm that it has a magnificent sound, and it's certainly better than uh, the yes stuff uh, that they have been doing at the beginning of the 90s. Yeah, and finally, uh, this just came with the mail. Brian Eno's new record, still sealed, reflection. So uh, I will uh, reflect this moment now and uh, open it. So suddenly we are in the middle of a product opening video. Isn't that exciting? So uh, check this out. Uh, so, one rip. And here we go. Yeah, this is the right feeling. Excellent. Oh, it's interesting. So, uh, it is a very dark cover with Brian Eno's photograph on it, but you probably can't even see it on the camera because it is, uh, it is very, with a very low contrast. So it's more like, uh, like a reflection. <laughs> so I haven't, I still haven't heard it. So I'm only showing you how it looks. This comes in this very, very well done uh, inner sleeves. Well, this time without liner notes, surprisingly. So this came out on warp, and. Uh, that's also the reason why it has a little card rattling inside the sleeve. And uh, that's of course the digital download that can be claimed and that's what I will be doing right now. So thanks for watching and I hope to meet you here the next time. Have a good day.